Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I would like to answer a question that I've been asked a few times since uh, we launched SageMaker Data Wrangler, our data preparation service inside of SageMaker. And the question is, should I use Data Wrangler or should I use Glue Data Brew? And it's a really good question because the two services are pretty similar. Um, they help you with preparing, cleaning, transforming, exporting data that you can use for downstream applications like analytics, training machine learning models and so on. So uh, it's a good point to, uh, to try and figure out, okay, which one should I use? And what can I do with one that I can't do with the other? Okay, let's quickly introduce what DataBrew is. So DataBrew was released a few weeks ago. It's part of AWS Glue, or a fully managed ETL service. And it lets you connect to data sources, right? Uh, create data sets. Right, you can get data sets from S3, Redshift, RDS, etc. And then you can go and start processing those. Okay, so here I created a data set already, um, pretty simple CSV data set. And uh, one of the things that I really like about uh, DataBrew is that once you've imported the data set, you can actually run a profile job, right? So the profile job is a, is a fully managed job that will give you um, basic information, uh, column statistics, et cetera, et cetera, right? And all it takes is really say, hey, you know, run the profile on this data set. Uh, just it's a one-click operation uh, and you also get a, a correlation matrix so you can see which features are highly correlated because obviously you may want to remove those later on etc uh, etc et so I think this is this is pretty cool uh, and this is a, a unique thing in DataBrew it's it you can't do the same in SageMaker Data Wrangler um, obviously, you can run your own code in uh, your own notebook and, and do, do the same, but uh, the correlation matrix is, uh, is not something that uh, Data Wrangler gives you, okay? And as you can see, it's a pretty, it's a pretty slick uh, UI. It's, it's rather nice, right? It's rather nice. Okay. So on the Data Wrangler side, um, we can connect to S3, Athena, and we can import, and then we get this graphical view on uh, on our workflow when it okay. comes to preparing data let's go back to data brew for now we can create a project okay let's open this okay it takes a couple of minutes to uh, to create the project but once you have that then again you have this pretty slick ui uh, with your transforms here okay and uh, and we can see quite a lot of things here let's compare to what we have in Data Wrangler. You know, I don't know if <laughs> we're gonna compare every single one of them, but you know, it looks it looks pretty similar to me, right? It looks pretty similar to me. Uh, cleaning, missing values. You know, I'm sure we have some unique things in, in both uh, in both services. Uh, one obvious one is uh, the ability in Data Wrangler to run your own custom code, right? PySpark, Pandas, uh, PySpark SQL or custom formulas in Spark SQL, which, you know, unless I've missed it, I don't think is available here, right? So that's, that's probably a big difference. Um, if, you, uh, if you don't want to run any code, if you don't want to see any code, you know, probably um, Data Brew is a good option. If you need or want to uh, run your own code and, and actually, you know, work at code level, then probably uh, data Wrangler is a better option, but I'm sure we can do the same, right? So, for example, if I want to drop the name column here, I'm just going to say, hey, um, select the column and delete it, preview changes, apply, okay, and you start building your, uh, you start building your recipe just like this, okay? Uh, you can download it as a YAML file, you can download it as a JSON file if you want to uh, use that for other purposes. 
And of course, we've seen how to do this already, but just for the sake of the discussion, let's do the same here. Drop column, name, preview, and add to the list of transforms. Okay. So, you know, it's, I would say it's pretty similar. Obviously one has a Jupyter based UI and the other has a, a probably a nicer looking uh, web-based UI, but you can certainly, uh, you can certainly get the job done, right? So um, another thing you can do in, uh, in Jupyter Lab uh, and Data Wrangler is building analysis, creating graphs, and remember the quick model uh, capability is, is really cool. You can train a quick model in place right in there. And uh, here it's a classification problem. So we see an F1 score and we see feature importance. Okay. So again, these are things you would definitely be interested in for machine learning, see the impact of feature engineering on, uh, on whatever metric uh, your problem requires. Um, that's not something you can do here, right? So again, probably more of a machine learning flavor to Data Wrangler and more of a data prep, data cleaning, ETL flavor to DataBrew. So when it comes to running your transformations, DataBrew makes it very, very simple. You go to jobs, create job, select your project, uh, give a job name, right? Uh, we can select the file type for the output and you can see there's quite a few things here which is quite nice and probably uh, uh, not available as is in Data Wrangler. So that's, uh, that's a good thing here. And you can pass an output location and just fire up the job. And then you're gonna get your transform file in S3, okay? In Data Wrangler, you have multiple export options. Uh, you can export to Python code that you add to your project. You can export your features to SageMaker Feature Store and go and check out that other video. You can export to uh, SageMaker Pipeline for automation. So again, go and check that out. Or you can uh, export to a Jupyter Notebook that just runs a SageMaker processing job that transforms your data. So we can see we have more options here. And, uh, and again, we have code level options. So if you're just interested in the transform data set, then data brew is probably much simpler. If you're just interested in uh, code and potentially automation and feature engineering, etc., then data wrangler is obviously a most, uh, the most flexible uh, option. As you can see, these are similar services. You can certainly do the same things with one or the other. I think the main difference is uh, if, you, if you're a machine learning engineer or a data scientist and, and you need code artifacts for automation, for customization, uh, uh, for um, further exploration, tweaking, etc., then Data Wrangler has uh, obviously the advantage here because it can very easily export all your transformation steps to Python code. If you're only interested in transforming data from one format to another format, then Data Brew is, I guess, simpler, right? Uh, it has a nicer UI and uh, you can very easily get the job done without writing a single line of code. Uh, you could still automate those steps. Um, Data Brew has APIs, uh, just like pretty much every single AWS service. So once you've defined a recipe and you want to run it again, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, of course you can automate. But you can very easily wor work with the UI and uh, and interactively transform your data without ever seeing a line of code. So maybe for uh, you know business analysts, um, maybe uh, even non-technical people. Data Brew is a friendlier, easier option, and you can still you know, plug it into Glue and automate uh, down the road. If you're really focused on machine learning and you need full visibility into the code, then SageMaker Data Wrangler is probably a better option. Then again, I would uh, encourage you to try both and, uh, and see which one works better for you. 
Maybe you can even combine them if you already use glue uh, to crawl data from different data sources. Um, then, you know, it's probably very easy to integrate um, data brew for initial processing, cleaning, you know, I would say the common generic part of the cleaning and, and processing jobs that you could do on your data sets. Um, maybe that's a good idea. And then um, machine learning teams could go and use data wrangler on those uh, pre-processed data sets to actually work on feature engineering and do the, the specific work for their ML project. In any Why case, not? feel free to experiment, invent your own workflows. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you have feedback, I'm also very happy to hear about it. And until then, keep rocking.